Well, next we're going to do is we're going to prepare some more uh, beds for corn, but I got a little dilemma. Uh, we're going to deal with how to deal with uh, the uh, winter ryegrass getting out of control. And uh, that's what we're going to work on next here. What happened is, uh, yes, it got warm all of a sudden. And uh, this being a bed that's a little further off of my attention space here in the garden, it got out of control. The winter ryegrass got a little too tall. So what happens when it gets this tall, it gets a little bit harder, as you just watch here, to, uh, to turn over. I mean, it will, but it just makes it more, doesn't break down as quickly. So what we're going to do is um, simply take a simple pruning shears and just go through and clip this down like this here. It's still going to break down and decompose nicely, but this way it's not going to be as hard to turn it over and get it uh, down below to where it needs to be uh, breaking down to get ready to plant corn, which will be planting this bed of corn next week. So it should be pretty, it, it rots down pretty quickly once it's cut like this. Next, all the nutrients go back into the soil, and uh, that's called a green manure cover crop. Uh, very simply when using winter rye grass seed, which is planted back in the fall to prepare the garden for the next spring. So we're going to uh, finish clipping that down and we'll come back and turn this bed over and then we'll let it sit for a while to get ready for the next planting of sweet corn. All right, we're almost done uh, trimming back the uh, overgrown winter rye grass seed here. By the way, if you let it go, it will uh, create a uh, headstock, and uh, you can actually eat the uh, the grain. It's a young uh, rye. Uh, it's used for uh, breads, and you can um, eat the grain. I think the birds enjoy it somewhat, but uh, usually I just mostly just turned underneath and rot it away for a cover crop to bring nutrition back in the soil. So there we go, so much easier it is now to get that back over because I made it shorter. It's simpler just to turn it over and uh, don't have to fight with it. See a nice uh, humus stuff breaking down there already? Beautiful stuff. That'll be that breaks down more. Corn loves it. Of course, we do use special fertilizer for corn from Gardens Alive, which um, is all natural uh, for organic gardens. It's a few minutes of uh, tilling here, and uh, we'll just break up a few of the bigger clumps there in a moment, and we'll let it sit for uh, probably a week, and next week we should be planting more corn. What I do is I do half a, half a bed, so this bed's about 13, 14 feet long, so I get about 14 rows by six across, and um, we'll go ahead and just... Uh, I'll plant half along with a medium season and about uh, one, two, three, four, about five beds down there is another uh, row ready to go. And that'll be the long season. So I alternate that by every uh, week, week and a half. That way you get a nice, slow, gradual maturity of, of corn. Once again, it's grown in blocks, so that way it pollinates itself quite well. Um, the bees also help too. I've seen the bees in the, in the uh, tassels and the silks doing their thing um, but it's that way you keep a nice even crop coming and we do about six beds of corn some are half beds but uh, and then even when we wrap up the strawberries we'll give it a quick a feeding of compost turn it under and we can get a, uh, another crop of corn out of that in the fall it doesn't produce quite as much but it does uh, we will get it corn right into uh, early October before it gets you know too cold around here and a lot of the corn gets frozen to enjoy during the winter 
which we'll be reviewing that at a later date when the corn starts coming in July and August.